Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to all of you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to show you the updates that we have so far for today. And from what I can see in the model data that this is going to start impacting Florida Keys and Southern Florida as early as tomorrow morning. Now, they show Cat 5 potential in the intensity guidance. But you can see right here that Jamaica had pretty much barely missed Jamaica. They didn't need too much going on. It never showed it was going to be too much of a threat for Jamaica. But for the Cayman Islands, you can see mostly you're going to be getting tropical storm force winds as this passes by. This pink right here is your hurricane force wind field. So, so far, it looks like it is going to travel a little bit further west. So far, GFS has been correct up to this point. But as you go towards Florida and you see the latest track, now don't take this cone as where everything is. You can see where all the hurricane force winds is expecting to hit as well as all the tropical storm force winds all down Florida. Remember, this track does not mean it's going right down the center. This track means that this center of this hurricane could be either way over here going towards Mobile or way over here curving towards Cape Coral. Either way, it's going to be east side loaded. Now, the NAM 3K is showing that by tomorrow morning, by 10 a.m., you're going to start getting rain bands hitting on Southern Florida and the Florida Keys all day for tomorrow before it starts coming a little bit closer. And the NAM is taking it a little bit to the east, curving it right on that sharp track. GFS is still showing it's going to travel a little bit further west. And pretty much what you have is you have a high pressure. You have a high pressure here that is circling around this way. You have a high pressure over here that is circling around this way with a trough up here pulling everything up. So the further west that it goes, the bigger chance it has to intensify, of course, as it goes this way in the Gulf of Mexico. But as it gets closer this way, it travels slower. Has a chance for all this shear to hit it. There's a lot of wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico, as well as the dry air getting to the core. So I'm showing it if it goes towards the GFS direction, it will create a big monster in the Gulf of Mexico, but downgrade quickly to a Cat 1 or a Cat 2 hurricane, not a Cat 4 or 5 landfall. So as you look at the latest intensity guidance, most ensembles agree, so no matter what, it will be a major hurricane in 36 hours. But now we have a couple of the ensembles that are going towards Cat 4, and even one taking it where it could peak out for a little moment up to a Cat 5. Severe strength all these warm waters in the Gulf, it's very believable. So as we look at the latest guidance according to National Hurricane Center in 24 hours, 48 hours passing by the Cayman Islands, and in 72 hours, it has a little bit northern of Western Cuba still going on that north track, not quite that northeastern track. So as we look in 72 hours, GFS has it exactly in that area at 946, strengthening it up right where National Hurricane Center is saying. And Euro has it already in the Florida Keys in 72 hours. So National Hurricane Center is still going with the track according to the GFS. The GFS has picked up on that western jog, not too many impacts on Jamaica, and still that western jog. And Euro is taking it further to the east where it's already affecting the Florida Keys. Now NAM3K overdoes it a little bit, but NAM3K is showing the Euro path where you have impacts as early as tomorrow morning. The one thing you gotta see is according to GFS, as you look at your relative humidity, you can see it strengthens way up to a strong hurricane all the way down to a 936, but then it starts weakening quickly right towards landfall, 956, 963, and then a 972 on landfall, down to a 983. So it weakens very quickly. If you notice, a lot of this dry air comes around and gets within this core. So according to the GFS, it will be a scary ride. You'll see an intensifying storm coming all the way to the last second. Now this brings a lot of storm surge, a lot of wind impacts, so there will be a lot of damage before landfall regardless. It has a big wind field. Still, as it comes on land, all the dry air gets in that core and weakens this system greatly down to a Cat 1 hurricane to a tropical storm and then dissipates pretty fast. Now the Euro not only showing already by the Florida Keys in 72 hours as a Cat 2 hurricane, strengthening up and going right down the coast, even getting even stronger as it goes towards Cape Coral, Sarasota, 
all in that area. Tampa, Tampa, you really got to watch out. You have a lot of harbors, and all this storm surge would really bring y'all a lot of flooding. This system is going counterclockwise, shoving all this wind and rain all down the coast of Florida, according to the Euro, before it even makes landfall. But also, if you look according to the Euro, it strengthens up to 956 and right before landfall a 963 and the dry air don't get involved in it matter of fact it sits there for two to three days dropping wind and rain all on florida and northern so both of them has terrible situations from what i can see national hurricane center is doing a little bit in between they're going with the gfs but they're predicting that it will do this turn and this trough is getting weaker and weaker to where it will not pull it to the northeast. It will head more northern. Only time would tell is too far to tell. These models are all over the place. Both of them are showing serious impact. And you can see this on a satellite view according to the GFS. So it intensifies greatly. But if you notice, all these impacts are east. So even if it still takes a GFS course, Florida, y'all still going to get impacts from this system as it takes that course. Then as it gets towards land, intensifies, look how quickly it weakens down as it goes towards land because of that dry air. Now, at the same time, the impacts are a lot different. So according to the Euro, it still brings all the impacts east side loaded to Florida, Georgia, even South Carolina. Y'all getting some 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts with a total of 142 miles per hour wind gusts right offshore right here by Tampa. So, so far it is showing according to the Euro that Florida is still getting all the main impacts. So Florida, I hope y'all are ready because I am showing it could be hitting y'all as early as tomorrow. A lot of big wind field right there by Western Florida. Please prepare for this. I hope y'all are prepared already. We've been knowing about this for weeks. And GFS takes it where all the strength is still going to be in the Gulf of Mexico. And by the time it hits land, it will be some strong impacts, but it weakens down greatly. A lot better chances than what the Euro is showing. Either way, it's going to be bad for a lot of people. But the GFS really has been trending this for a while. So if you look right here, just at the control member, because the rest of these don't matter. The only thing that matters is the control member. So this is what yesterday's run was. Literally, as it goes towards Cuba, intensifies, goes right towards the Florida panhandle. And all this right here is where all the impacts will be. So literally in four to five days, it is going to be almost on landfall. The update this morning shows the same thing, that it goes the same direction, same path right towards the Florida panhandle. So it has not given up. Literally, you have four to five days before landfall, but you're still getting impacts as early as tomorrow. So National Hurricane Center has put it directly in the middle of the GFS and the Euro, but it could be anywheres in this cone, guys, which makes the impacts further broad. So we got to stay on top of this. We already have hurricane warnings for the western Cayman Islands, the eastern Cayman Islands. You have tropical storm watch. You have hurricane watches for western Cuba and tropical storm watches right here for Cuba. So this is already starting to intensify, guys. So as we look at the latest track that we have, we have all the way from Fort Myers, Florida, all the way to Gulf Shores and Mobile, Alabama. That's just the cone. That's just where the center could go. So it could be anywhere in here. And if it is right here on a sharp curve towards Fort Myers, all of Southern Florida is going to be on the impact. It's not just in this cone. But if your town is in this cone and right on the edge outside this cone, especially the east side of it, you should definitely have preparations for what is coming. Now, remember, I have these links in the description so you can zoom into your area and see exactly what is expected for your area. According to the Euro with the wind gusts, it is bringing... Western Cuba, the worst of the wind gusts, tropical storm towards St. George. GFS is taking it even further to the west. GFS has always been seeing that western jog. According to the Euro, as it goes towards Key West, it is bringing anywhere from 70 to a little bit west of you, still 90 miles per hour wind gusts. And as it goes right up Florida, we're talking 60, 70. All this white is all 90. All this purple is all high 80s. Miles per hour wind gusts, with so far it being Sarasota, 
Clearwater, Tampa, all y'all getting over 100, over 110 miles per hour wind gusts, according to the Ural. Now, according to the GFS, it's more west. All the impacts are going to be in the Gulf of Mexico. It'll be somewhere towards the Panhandle of Florida, southeastern Mississippi, Alabama, even getting into Georgia and going into the South Carolina. Euro is showing that the impacts will go that way as well. So it's not just on landfall. It's going to affect a lot more people than what's in this track. Rainfall as well is showing heavy rainfall for Cayman Islands, Cuba. As you go through the Gulf of Mexico, the GFS is taking a lot of people getting on the rainfall. Euro is still consolidating towards the southeast. And it's still bringing Tampa as a number one hit area over a foot of rainfall and that is coming within the next two to three days guys that is overwhelming amount of rainfall all the storm surge it's just really going to be a bad area right here if the euro is correct thank you so much for visiting my channel today god bless each one of you please share this information let others know that florida could begin impacted as early as tomorrow morning you literally don't have days left these rain bands are coming before the hurricane so I will do an update this afternoon and keep you all updated as soon as we can every single day. And of course, I still will be live streaming this. Now, I don't do any hype on my live stream. My live stream is all about safety. I'm not trying to be this big fabulous thing showing you all these interesting, entertaining things. I just want to give you information on impacts as they come and what you can expect when they come. Because number one thing on this situation is safety. I want to read something that you all should know. It should be close to your hearts. You should always keep it close to your hearts. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you all today. I really hope that y'all are prepared the best way you can be. I'll see you all this afternoon. All glory goes to God, our Father in heaven. And may he keep all of you, your family, your friends, your enemies, all of you safe. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you all.